Hello everyone, Nicholas there here with you again, another Ableton tutorial. Uh, before we get stuck in today, I want to say a big shout out to uh, my Patreon subscribers. You guys really make it possible to keep making content like this, so I really appreciate the support over there. Uh, and a special treat on days like today when I have a lot of material and a lot of stuff that I'm making in Ableton. If you are a Patreon subscriber, you can download this whole Ableton set, including all of the patches that I'm going to make and all of the source sounds over on Patreon. If you're watching on YouTube, check the link in the description. Uh, and if you want to get involved and download all of this stuff, you can head on over to Patreon. So, what is all of this stuff? What am I looking at today? What are we doing? I am looking at some different ways of using field recordings in compositions. Um, in fact, today I'm looking at not one, not two, not three, but four techniques on using field recordings in compositions uh, that go beyond simply sort of layering it into a track, layering the sound of birds. And I think these are all very nice. I love the sounds of birds and there's absolutely nothing wrong with using field recordings in that kind of a way. But I want to just explore um, yeah, today four techniques on, uh, on ways we can use field recordings that go a bit deeper than that. So. I have here a bunch of field recordings that I made on the weekend. I went for a lovely hike up uh, one of the mountains near Bergen in Norway, where I am at the moment. And here are some recordings I made, and they sound kind of like this. Some active water, some gentle water, uh, some scraping of some ice, some snow sounds some stones, some squelchy boots, some, st oh, yeah, goodness me, some strong water. So there's a bunch of sounds and as mentioned, if you uh, join on Patreon, you'll be able to download all of these sounds as part of this Ableton set. So I've done a little bit of preparation for today's tutorial because I do want to get through four techniques quite quickly. Um, so I've already picked out a few sounds. So I'm going to turn that channel off, make it nice and small. And the first sound that I've picked out is this sound. The sound of some gentle water. And we're going to use this uh, to turn this into a synthesizer, something that's playable, something that we can use to, yeah, to play chords and notes and melodies and all those sorts of things that, that will still contain this quality of water. So how am I going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is bring out a resonant frequency. So I'm going to take an EQ, EQ8, and I'm going to make a lovely spike at 256 hertz. I'm choosing 256 hertz because that is uh, relatively give or take middle C. And that allows us to map what's going to happen onto a keyboard and uh, make it sort of vaguely in tune with everything else. So, and as we can hear, well, not so much is happening. If I scale it up a bit more, not much is happening. You can just begin to hear a note coming out. If I duplicate this, Command D, there we can hear this note C uh, beginning to come out and you can see it here on the spectrograph. Let's do one more. Uh, now it's really clear. Let's bring the scale down on that. We don't need it quite so much. And I'm going to take, roll off the top end a little bit. Yeah, because we've got the sound of the water and, but we don't want it to be so, so intense. So. Uh, now I'm going to make a new audio channel, Command-T, and we're going to resample that. So we're going to take audio from channel number four. Uh, we're going to press play again. We're going to enable record, play, and we're just going to record some of that. doesn't matter how much. We don't need so much. Uh, record, record, record. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Record, record, record. That's probably enough. There, that will do us. We can press stop on you. Okay, now we can turn off that water channel. And now I'm going to create a new MIDI channel, uh, Shift Command T. And on that MIDI channel, I'm going to bring in uh, a simpler. Now I simply drag this piece of audio that I've recorded into the simpler. Uh, enable MIDI monitoring here. Turn on the keyboard here, which it already is, and I now have a keyboard that I can play that has the sound of that water. Mm. 
uh, functional harmony. Uh, we can, of course, tweak the sound a little bit, give it a little bit more s uh, attack, a little, a little bit slower release. can hear each note that is playing back it's pitching it up and down so the the uh, quality of the water sound the water component of the note changes as well so i'm going to rename that we're going to call that uh, water synth uh yeah that's a very quick fly through of technique number one you can of course go a lot more in depth yourself uh, make the sounds a lot more interesting but that's a, a simple technique there uh, we don't need that audio channel anymore. Delete. Uh, that is technique number one. Technique number two, what have we got here? Well, we've got the sound of some breaking twigs, which sounds like twigs breaking, as you'd expect. Uh, there's some smaller sounds in there. I think the sounds of uh, myself and Hokkon moving around as we uh, move towards different twigs. Uh, well, it sounds like that. So what are we going to do with this? Well, what we're going to do with this is we're going to use a vocoder uh, as a way of bringing some tonality, some uh, sound to this. So a vocoder is kind of a bit like uh, listening to this sound of the twigs through the window of another sound, a bit like a, a stained glass window, looking at a tree from one side of a stained glass window. Uh, the stained glass will really color uh, color the, the way that you see the tree and we're going to do that with a sound so what i've got here uh, i found a nice pad sound i just programmed in a d minor seven chord uh, and that sounds like this that sounds like you'd expect a pad sound to sound so i'm going to use that as the vocoder sound for these breaking tweaks so you'll find the vocoder in uh, Ableton's uh, Reverb and Resonance folder. Vocoder, we're going to drag that onto the breaking twigs. Uh, we're going to select, change the carrier from noise to we want it to be external and Atmos pad. So we're going to select Atmos pad here. Uh, I'm going to turn the bands right up because I want it to be quite, uh, uh, quite particular and I don't want to hear the original sound of the Atmos pad, so what I'm going to do is, where it says audio to master, I'm going to say audio to send only. Uh, now, when I put both of it, and I'm going to just turn this to um, warp, and I'm going to turn loop on so that it will keep playing. Uh, where is loop gone? Is it in launch somewhere? No. I can never remember where to find loop. Ah, there it is. So now this sound will continue playing, and in fact, let's make it so we don't need the, uh, that end bit. So we have this breaking twig sound, and at the moment you won't hear anything because the pad sound is not playing, and it's so therefore there's nothing to vocode it through, but uh, we turn the pad sound on, and now what you hear is each time there's a little spike in the audio, it's coming through the pad sound. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a an upwards compressor the Ableton has this fantastic uh, multi-band dynamics ott over the top uh, and i'm going to put that before the vocoder so what that's going to do is that's going to bring out all of these crunchy you can hear how much difference that, that's making to the sound of that uh, the tweaks we're getting a lot of white noise a lot of crunchy stuff let's dial that back a bit so, so now when we bring that into the vocoder We get this lovely gentle textures that are punctuated by the sounds of the breaking twigs. Really nice. Uh, maybe we need a bit of a limiter in there because every now and then some of those are a bit too loud. So let's put a limiter in there. That's very nice. Maybe it's uh, nice to just gain it up a bit afterwards. Oh, maybe we can give it a bit more here. There we go. 
So that is technique number two, using a vocoder um, as a way of uh, listening to the breaking tweaks sound through through another sound. Now, uh, w uh, technique number three, a little bit similar, but um, uh, uh, you get a similar result, but in, in a different method. And so, depending on the source sounds that you're using, it can be can be quite different. So again, I'm going to use this Atmos pad. But this time I do want to use the sound of the pad. Let's turn off the breaking twig sound. This time I do want to use the sound of the pad, so I'm going to change this back to master out. And I have another sound here, some snow sounds. What does that sound like? Crunchy. That's just playing around with, yeah, with, the <laughs> with some snow. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use an envelope follower on that. So in modulators here, we're going to take an envelope follower. Now this does not change the quality of this sound at all. All it is doing is taking the amplitude of the input signal and enabling me to map that to anything. So you can see it's creating this little line down the bottom here. And I'm going to map that to the filter cutoff on this Atmos pad. Now let's play the pad. And now you can see the pad just uh, just wiggling a little bit with the, the, the snow sounds. So what I'm going to do is we're going to turn up the gain on this. And again, this is not changing the quality of the sound itself. And I'm going to change this so this is only going to the sends as well. And we're going to want to put a loop on this. So let's turn on warp. Let's turn on loop. Uh, let's turn on the Atmos pad. So, oh, no, we don't want to open touch designer. So now you can see this uh, filter cutoff is being controlled by the volume of these snow sounds over here. And we can give it a bit more, smooth it out a bit like this. Yeah, this is nice. So again, this is a way of using the, the, in this case, the rhythm, the amplitude of this this field recording, to uh, to control some part of the the uh, the sound within the within the project. It's a it's a kind of a similar. It, it may feel a little bit similar to technique number two, but it's a, depending on the sounds that you're using and the way that you're using them, it, it can be quite different as well. So that was technique number three. Uh, and technique number four, uh, well, I definitely did some pre -prep, prep here. And uh, what you'll get if you are on Patreon as part of this sample set is these are all of the uh, the recordings I made and in here we have a whole bunch of percussion shots so I went through all of these recordings and dug out any little short short sharp sounds uh, that existed uh, and I've put them all into a drum rack uh, in here so we have all these sorts of different sounds Uh, sometimes I layered them up, so on the, on the snare sound here, you can see that there's, that there's even three different layers. The kick's got a couple of layers, some kind of scrunchy snow type sound. Uh, and from all of those, I made a beat. So those drums, uh, there's nothing there that's not part of those field recordings. So there you have it, uh, four, four different ways. And let's just try combining these. Let's just, I want to put this back to here. And I want to put this back on because I want to use you there. Did I enable everything that I needed to enable? Oh, I need to delete this. And come back here and open up this again. 
there's that, uh, so this is the breaking twigs technique with the, the Atmos pad, and let's bring some drums in. Let's try adding a couple of chords into this. Let's try and uh, bring a little bit more gain into this sound. Again, I'm going to see what happens if I use this. have it. Four techniques for using field recordings uh, that go beyond simply layering in the field recordings. Uh, hope you got something out of this video. Once again, if you're a Patreon member, you can download this whole Ableton session with all of the field recordings, this drum patch and everything else. Uh, if you do do that and make something with it, would love to hear it. Please send it to me. Um, yeah, I hope you got something from this. Until next time.